So animals right across the animal kingdom use pheromones and communicate in all sorts of complex ways. It's just 55 years or so since the first pheromone was identified chemically, and that, as you may know, was the pheromone of the silk moth, Bombyx mori, and they named that molecule Bombicol. So that was identified by a large team led by the German Nobel laureate, Butenandt. So that same year, they had to create a new word for this new phenomenon. And the word that was invented in 1959 was pheromones. And all those years later, we've only needed to modify the definition just slightly. The first is that we are now conscious that pheromones are evolved signals, which we separate from the idea of cues, but which are just information like the odours used by mosquitoes to find their prey. And the prey are not giving those off as a signal, those are just cues. But the other thing that wasn't known initially was that unlike the silk moth, most pheromones come as a complex of molecules and they come as a multi-component pheromone. And so we've added this defined ratios in the case of multiple component pheromones because most moths actually share a group of compounds if they're related species and it's the combination that gives specificity. So this is the definition of pheromone and for a long time there was doubt that mammals had pheromones. But I think it's now clear that mammals do use a mixture of small and large molecules. So the rabbit mammary pheromone in the top left there was discovered in 2003. The pig pheromone has been identified for many years, and this is released in the male saliva and both attracts and changes the behaviour of the female, the sow, ready for mating. And mice are among the best studied mammals. There are lots of small molecules shown there, each of which has different activity. Some are released by males, some only by females. But what's become clear in recent years, and it's the subject of this conference, are numerous peptide pheromones, ESP1 and Darcin being two of the most famous. And these peptides are secreted by the sender of the signal and either left in urine marks, in the case of Darcin, or in ESP1, they're produced in the tear glands of the male, and when the male and female nuzzle noses at the beginning of their courtship, the molecules are transferred from the male's tear gland into the nose of the female. But one of the things that caused people working on vertebrates such difficulty in the early days was that vertebrate chemical profiles are very complex. And so if you do a gas chromatogram, of the secretions from a vertebrate, it'll look something like this at the top there. And this is an imaginary column where on the left-hand side we have the trace from hydrocarbons separated by gas chromatography. And on the right-hand side we have large molecules such as peptides separated by HPLC. But the chemical profile comes from many sources. Some are secreted by the animal itself. These may be influenced by the immune system and by hormones, and quite a few molecules come from bacterial symbionts. So in the human armpit, which is a nice example of a mammalian secreting organ, we have more than 700 molecules at least produced in the armpit, and many of those are produced by the bacteria living on the hair there. And of course, diet also affects the smells that we go off. And in some cases, we pick up odors from other animals, from other conspecifics. And if we were bees, then we would give off odors that we've collected from flowers. Infections also affect our chemical profile. So this is a very complex system and the early scientists who studied mammals thought that it would be impossible to find pheromones against this complex molecular background. But in fact they did find them and what I've drawn up here is the way that within that complex chemical profile you can identify pheromones which are the same for example in all dominant males. So pheromone 1 is the kind of pheromone that involves a peptide the large molecules on the right are combined with small molecules on the left and the small molecules may go in the cleft of the larger protein. Pheromone number two consists of a number of small molecules and the ratio of small molecules may be important in giving the signal. Pheromone three is like ESP1 or Darcin where there's a single peptide involved as the signal itself. The very complex chemical profile can also be used by animals to distinguish between them and to remember your partner or remember other animals in the same group. What animals are doing is picking out molecules in that complex profile and remembering them as characteristic of that particular animal. And Sherlock Holmes in Baker Street 
not far from here might give you an indication of how that's working. In this photograph of a famous film version of Sherlock Holmes, we recognise him by the deerstalker hat, his cravat, his coat, and particularly his pipe. But different people seeing Sherlock Holmes might remember different characteristics. So I might remember the hat and the pipe, you might remember the cravat, pipe and coat, but somebody else might remember a different combination. So what we remember is individual to us, but looking at an animal, in this case Sherlock Holmes, a fictional detective character who everybody knows. So if we see that individual again in a different context, and here this is a statue in Switzerland, I still recognise this as Sherlock Holmes, but I recognise it in a different way from the way that you remember him and that Sophie does. But this is enough to give individual recognition. Now, if you changed these visual characteristics for molecules in the chemical profile, I think you'll get the idea of how a signature mixture, which is what we remember as characteristic of an individual, might work. So, in summary, a signature mixture is a variable subset of molecules of an animal's chemical profile learnt by other animals. So it might be used to distinguish individuals, and this works underwater. Lobsters do something very similar too. It might be used uh, long after you've grown up to choose mates that are non-kin, that are not your siblings. And of course in social mammals it's very important for knowing who's part of the group and who's not. So in summary, pheromones are molecules that are the same across the species, that is, perhaps in all males, and these tend to be thought of as innate. It doesn't involve learning as a rule. Signature mixtures are all to do with learning, and these are the molecules that we remember so that we recognize other individuals or other group members. And I explore these uh, topics in more detail in this book, Pheromones and Animal Behavior, that was published just before the meeting. Thank you very much.